This screencast is on visualizing density. Part one of the screencast defines density and introduces you to the glass marbles volume problem, which is solved using lab methods, visualized, and then there's a calculated estimate. Density is a measure of mass divided by volume. The units are grams divided by milliliters or grams divided by cm cubed. It's the relative mass between objects. On the left, the copper feels relatively heavy compared to its volume, and the wood feels relatively light compared to its volume. Let's discuss the glass marbles problem. The question is, how many 5 8 inch diameter marbles fit completely inside a 650 milliliter container? This is not a solution or answer you can look up in wolframalpha.com. It's something you'll have to think about and determine using a couple of different methods here. I can solve this problem using lab methods, the same lab methods that you'll be using in this course. I know already that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. And if I simply take my scale that I weigh my coffee out in the morning and I tear a mason jar on top of it, which means I zeroed it out and I'm only weighing the contents in this jar, I put the jar on the scale, tear it, I pour in 650 grams of water, which is the mass, and it's equivalent to 650 milliliters of water because of this conversion factor right here. If I put a mark on the side of the mason jar, I can simply put it on the counter, slowly pour marbles in until I reach the level of this mark. After I do that, I count them and I get 180 marbles exactly. Let's visualize a calculated estimate next. If I take a string of 5 8 inch marbles and I make the string 8 marbles long, they measure 5 inches. The reason I chose 8 marbles is 5 eighths times 8 is 5 inches. Next, I make a 2D grid out of them and I have 64 marbles in an area 5 inches by 5 inches, or 25 square inches. Next, I take a look at a 3D view of these marbles, and I have an 8 by 8 by 8 box, which is 512 marbles, and it occupies a volume of 125 cubic inches, and it's assuming that all these marbles are perfectly aligned, and you can probably guess that there'll be some sort of settling. And the estimate we come up with, which is 512 marbles, is exactly equal to 125 square inches for this volume is what it will fit inside of, is probably a, just a bit low. Now let's go to a calculated estimate to our original question. I set up as a dimensional analysis problem. I start with the 650 milliliters. I work my way across and I use the conversion factor that we just determined, and I use the very commonly used one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. And of course, both these numbers, the units are cubed, and the number right here is cubed. So this one cubed is one, and 2.54 cubed is something different. When I set up like this, my units cancel in a nice, neat fashion, and I'm left with 162, and it's actually 62.5 marbles, which is 162 whole marbles, which is very close to our lab results of 180 marbles. Let's look at the second part of this screencast, where we'll take the glass marbles problem and we'll look at the density, and then we'll look at the density of glass, and we'll compare densities, and then we'll look at lessons learned. Here's the density problem. What's the density of this 125 cubic inch cube of 512 marbles, assuming the cube is weightless. 
So I'm looking really at the density of the entire cube. First, I'm going to determine the average mass of a marble. If I just weigh one marble, I only get one significant figure, which is the five grams. If I weigh 10 of them, I get 53 grams. I divide these numbers, I get 5.3 grams. And if I weigh 100 marbles out, I get an average mass of 5.23 grams, which is better precision to work with in our example here. So let's take the 512 marbles, multiply them by 5.23 grams per marble, and I get approximately 2,678 grams. I'm going to carry this one past the significant figures, and I'm going to determine the significant figures at the end of the problem. To determine density, I take the mass of the marbles, which I just determined. I know the volume of the cube is 5 by 5 by 5, which is 125 inches cubed. And I just take a conversion factor right here, and I want to get rid of these inches. So I look for 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. And I just cube all of the units and the number, and I end up with 1.31 grams per centimeter cubed. So 1.31, so water weighs one gram per centimeter cubed. This is slightly heavier than water. If I throw the cube in a dish of water or a bucket of water, it will sink. The next question we're gonna to try to answer is, what's the density of glass? Since this is a mixture of glass and air, we would expect it to be lower. So we'll expect the density of glass to be higher than this 1.31 grams per cm cubed. Let's look at the density of this marble right here. It's 5 eighths inch diameter. First, I wanna calculate the volume. For the life of me, I have a hard time remembering what the volume of a sphere is. So I go to Wolfram, type in volume of sphere. I come up with this formula, which is based on radius. Since it's 5 h inch diameter, I cut it in half and that's 5 16 inch. And instead of fooling around with calculating this number out, I'm just going to simply take 5 16 and multiply it by 2.54 because there's 2.54 centimeters in an inch, and I get 0.794 centimeters. For density, I take the original average mass of a marble, 5.23. I take the volume calculation I just performed. I take one number divided by the other, and I get an answer of 2.54 grams per centimeter cubed. To check my answer, I go back to Wolfram Alpha. I type in density glass, which is our check, and it says in the summary that the median Density is 2.52 grams per centimeter cubed, so I'm approximately right. Density is important because it varies with substances. Different substances react depending on what their densities are. Now let's take a look at how densities vary. Of these three cubes here, which cube has the highest density? Our original cube the cube that has 4,900, 4,096 marbles, or the cube that has 64 marbles. These marbles are half the diameter of the original marbles. These blue marbles are twice the diameter. I'll let you think about it for a moment. It should be relatively obvious that the smaller the diameter of the marbles, the higher the density. Eventually, the marble, marbles get so dense that there's no air in here, and it reaches the actual density of the glass. The reason we've gone through this experiment and this screencast is to give you a feel for density. In the red marble case here, we might have substance that reacts with air, and the air becomes part of the reaction. If you have too dense of a material, it will not react. Let's take, for example, a grain silo. You've probably heard of silos exploding due to dust in the air. 
Well, just flour will explode in a tube given the right density. Density can also be observed on a daily basis, just going to the fruit aisle of a grocery store. An orange that weighs relatively more has more molecules of water in it versus maybe a more dehydrated orange that has less water and it'll actually feel lighter. So your better purchase is the denser orange. Lessons learned. There's five things I'd like to talk briefly about. First one is when performing dimensional analysis, first convert English system units to metric units. This eliminates confusion later in the problem. Set your dimensional analysis in unit order. In other words, as you're moving from left to right, if you start with inches, convert the inches to centimeters, then convert the centimeters to meters using the appropriate conversions. Wolfram Alpha can be used to check results, but does not always supply solutions. Again, density is a key chemistry concept which needs to be understood, and we'll use it several, several other times in this course. And last, we determine the average mass of a marble, and this is not the same as a weighted average mass used to determine atomic mass. And I'll put this in here as food for thought for the next few chapters. Thanks for watching this screencast.